uh, the Spine Africa project, it, uh, it really started about uh, two and a half, uh, three years ago. Uh, when a good friend of mine, uh, she was opening up a school uh, in the Congo and uh, she asked me uh, if I would be interested in going out and helping in a general humanitarian way. Um, whilst I was out there, I was in Lubumbashi, which is uh, the capital of uh, one of the provinces in the south called Katanga. And there's a huge mining industry out there. And, and whilst I was there, I was able to uh, have a tour of a couple of the local clinics and hospitals there. And as I was going around uh, um, these clinics, I uh, kept coming across young males who had been injured in mining accidents and who had been left uh, with severe spinal injuries or in some cases paralyzed. And uh, it occurred to me that there was really no provision uh, for spine surgical services out in the Congo. And uh, this, was the, this was the seed uh, of the Spine Africa project. Uh, and it, uh, you know, my desire at that time was to try and develop a spine surgical service that would be able to um, achieve a couple of things, and one of them being education of the local doctors and the local healthcare um, uh, community in terms of how to treat and manage spine injuries. Uh, the second thing was to actually start uh, a foundation that would be able to uh, provide doctors and healthcare professionals uh, who had expertise already in the management of these conditions uh, to go out and treat patients. When we were in the Congo, uh, there were two places that we uh, saw patients. Uh, the first place was at the Pansy Clinic, which is in Bukavu in the Eastern Congo. And uh, the clinic is uh, directed by a very inspirational uh, doctor called Dr. Dennis McQuaggy. And the clinic has for years specialized and provided care to women who have been victims of sexual violence. And one of the things that they did every morning, uh, which was really moving, was that they gathered everybody in the courtyard and they had uh, a, a singing choir that would uh, perform every morning uh, as a source of inspiration and strength for these women who had been through extremely traumatic uh, psychosocial experiences. Merci pour la question. L'hôpital de Panzi a été créé en 1999 et dans sa vision première, c'était venir en aide aux femmes à conditions obstétricales difficiles. Mais avec l'évolution, l'hôpital de Panzi s'occupe aujourd'hui en grande partie des victimes de violences sexuelles. Euh, L'hôpital de Panzi, comme je viens de le dire, euh, aujourd'hui ne soigne pas que les femmes victimes de violences sexuelles. Il est vrai que parmi les victimes de violences sexuelles, on observe également beaucoup de femmes qui présentent la pathologie euh, de la colonne vertébrale et qui ont besoin d'une prise en charge spécifique. On n'a pas de compétences pour ça. La deuxième chose, c'est qu'on voit une augmentation en fait. Euh, euh, d'autres malades qui ne sont pas forcément victimes de violences sexuelles qui ont besoin d'une prise en charge euh, donc, euh, de traitement au niveau de la colonne lombaire et malheureusement, comme je viens de dire, on n'a ni le moyen de diagnostic ni le moyen de traiter ces malades. La seule possibilité c'est de les envoyer très, très très loin et 
beaucoup n'ont pas le moyen de pouvoir y aller. Voilà pourquoi c'est très important de pouvoir développer en fait euh, cette prise en charge du traitement euh, de, la, de la pathologie de la colonne vertébrale au niveau de l'hôpital de Paris. And one of, our, uh, one of our main goals with the Spine Africa project is to try and raise funds to be able to uh, purchase equipment, to purchase materials and to bring in uh, radiological uh, imaging devices that are going to allow us to more effectively help the population out there uh, who have sustained spinal injuries and have uh, chronic degenerative spinal conditions. En fait, je pense que ce que nous avons observé, c'est que euh, il est vrai que les femmes, non seulement elles sont violées, mais ce sont les femmes qui portent aussi euh, euh, tous les lourds fardeaux, je dirais, de la, de la société. Euh, que ce soit dans l'agriculture, donc euh, à partir de la, la cultiver, euh, transporter les récoltes, aller vendre les récoltes, et les femmes font tout ce travail sur le dos. Et parfois les femmes transportent le poids qui dépasse leur propre poids, elles commencent à transporter ça au bas âge. Ça c'est quelque chose qu'on observe. Mais aujourd'hui avec même le phénomène en fait, d'esclavage des femmes, les femmes dans les mines, elles travaillent très très dur, elles, transportent, elles, elles, elles doivent transporter par exemple toute la terre qu'il faut aller, aller traiter sur, sur la tête et tout ça, ça, ça comprime la, 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 la colonne vertébrale et à la fin ça crée des lésions de compression qui sont des lésions graves au niveau de la colonne vertébrale ce qui fait que nous avons des femmes qui ont des douleurs extrêmes à un certain âge et ne savent plus bouger, ne savent plus marcher et, et donc il est très très important de pouvoir faire face à ces phénomènes en leur donnant une vie euh, euh, correcte par euh, les interventions chirurgicales que je pense que Spine Africa peut nous aider à faire. The civil war in Rwanda uh, was was like a it was like a tidal wave. It was a tsunami. It had immediate and very far-reaching socio-economic consequences, and the displacement and the killing um, of a very high number of the male working force has meant that a lot of the manual labor has now fallen literally on the backs of the women. And one of the big problems uh, that we saw when we were out in the Congo was this issue of uh, women from a very young age, I and mean, we saw girls as young as five, six years old, having to carry packs from their villages into the town, uh, packs of wood, packs of coal, and some of these loads were uh, up to 200 pounds. And they wake up at four, five in the morning, and they set off and they'll walk for three, four hours so they can uh, take their goods to market to sell them. And obviously doing this every day has a very destructive impact on the spine. And what we saw in the clinic there uh, was a high incidence of prematurely degenerated spines where we had women in their 20s and 30s coming into the clinic and the x-rays, it, it was almost as if you were looking at the spine of a 60 or 70 year old. And the pain and disability that this causes uh, was indescribable. Euh, je pense à partir du moment où l'hôpital dépend, si aujourd'hui c'est un hôpital euh, qui est de référence pour presque toute la région et que les malades qui viennent, ils viennent de partout, ils viennent avec l'espoir de trouver des solutions. Malheureusement, nous avons des problèmes diagnostiques. Au niveau matériel, par exemple, l'hôpital de Pans, il n'a pas la possibilité de faire les scanners n'a pas la possibilité de faire les RMI, n'a pas la possibilité de pouvoir en fait mener un diagnostic correctement pour savoir comment opérer. Et je pense que ça c'est la première chose, nous avons besoin d'un équipement diagnostique pour pouvoir en fait faire le diagnostic correct. Et une fois que le diagnostic est posé, le, la deuxième étape 
c'est d'avoir des capacités de ressources humaines pour pouvoir faire les interventions chirurgicales dans des conditions optimales. Et là, nous faisons un appel à toutes les bonnes volontés de pouvoir nous aider à l'hôpital de Panzi d'acquérir ces équipements. Et nous pensons qu'avec la coopération, nous pouvons obtenir la possibilité d'avoir des ressources humaines pour développer ce type de, de chirurgie ou de traitement pour les malades. Oui, je pense qu'on ne s'habitue jamais à la souffrance. Et je pense que lorsque vous regardez dans les yeux d'une femme qui souffre, qui souffre puisque la nature est méchante, qui souffre puisqu'elle n'a pas pu être protégée comme elle, elle devrait l'être, qui souffre puisqu'il y a une méchanceté humaine, je pense que cette souffrance, on ne peut pas s'y habituer. C'est quelque chose qui est tous les jours nouveau et qui fait tous les jours mal. Et je crois que, au contraire, je crois plus on voit des victimes, plus ça fait mal et plus on a envie de réagir, puisque je crois qu'il y a des choses qu'on ne devrait pas voir si l'homme pouvait traiter l'autre comme il voudrait qu'il lui-même soit traité. You know, the Spine Africa project also wants to uh, raise awareness uh, of, of the problems, of the social, uh, the socio-economic problems that have developed there as a consequence of the civil war and the continuation of conflict. And we uh, want to provide funds and raise monies to be, to be able to provide, at least in the hospital or the clinics where we're working, a regular source of power uh, and a, a, a more a reliable source of uh, water Walk. and uh, every member of the family as soon as they are able to uh, to walk become involved in providing water and food and economic resources so that the family can eat and drink and uh, we would often see uh, small children as young as three four five years old every day having to walk to the well many many miles to collect water uh, for the family. But the international aid organizations uh, that we uh, happen to meet whilst we're out there are involved in efforts uh, to bring uh, more accessible uh, water outlets to the villages and communities. And the quality of the roads uh, has deteriorated. Uh, the uh, certain areas uh, around the immediate cities and towns are tarmacked and allow for a relative degree of uh, um, convenient travel. Uh, as one moves um, three, four, five uh, kilometers from the town center, the roads become dirt tracks. And obviously this has made the delivery of healthcare very difficult. And specifically with regards to spinal injuries and the young guys that are injured in the mines, transporting these guys from the mines to the clinics or to the healthcare facilities is extremely difficult and in treating these conditions uh, effectively uh, time is uh, a critical element. The, uh, the waiter at the hostel that we were staying at had a nephew, uh, 11 year old nephew, who had a very tragic story. Um, Tresor um, was five years old when his father uh, was killed in the Civil War and he uh, continued to live with his mother and they uh, lived in a small uh, mud hut with a, th uh, a thatched roof and uh, the lack of power and electricity uh, in many parts of the Eastern Congo means that people's uh, sources of energy and lighting come from kerosene lamps so there's a very high incidence of these lamps causing fires and uh, two to three years after his father was killed, uh, a fire broke out in their hut and uh, tragically his mother was killed and he sustained very severe third degree burns to his neck uh, and chest and upper back. Uh, these burns led to uh, contractures of the skin which led on to very functional uh, impairments with talking, um, swallowing, eating. 
he was adopted by his uncle and his aunt, and his uncle was uh, one of the waiters at the, at the hostel. Um, and to make matters worse, he, there was this noticeable deterioration in his ability to function, but then all of his um, friends began to shun him. So whilst we were at the hostel, uh, his uncle approached us and asked if, us if there was anything that we could do. And uh, not being plastic surgeons, uh, we uh, suggested that we would attempt to try and bring him over to the US uh, where we would have uh, plastic surgeons here try and treat his contractures uh, and his uh, uh, deformities. And although this was uh, an issue that was somewhat lateral or somewhat peripheral to what we were doing, what we would like to do, or what the Spine Africa project would like to do as it develops, is to provide um, funding such as cases like this can be uh, flown over uh, and treated uh, in the US. Uh, during the, um, uh, the trip to the Congo uh, in August, uh, we weren't planning on actually doing any surgery on this trip. Uh, the intention, or one of the intentions of the trip, was to uh, really just evaluate patients, uh, to evaluate the facilities in more detail and to try and get a clear understanding of what it was uh, that we needed to do um, to enable us to commence uh, carrying out surgery. But whilst we were out there on the uh, second day, whilst we were seeing uh, patients in the clinic, uh, there was a, uh, an 18-year-old boy uh, that came into the, uh, into the clinic. His name was Iwegu. And he began to relate a story that was uh, really upsetting. He um, told us that about six weeks before he had been involved in an accident in his uh, village, one of his friends uh, had pushed him into a ditch, he'd fallen awkwardly, uh, landed on his back, and progressively began to experience uh, pain. Over the uh, following days uh, from the accident, he began to lose the use uh, of his legs. Um, he was unable to urinate and went to the local clinic where he was catheterized. They brought him into the, uh, the clinic where we were seeing patients. He was in a wheelchair. He had no sensation in his legs and was unable to, uh, to move his legs. We were unfortunately limited by him just having had a set of x-rays. And so our assessment of this young boy uh, was that if we didn't operate on him uh, uh, during that trip that there would be no chance of any return of neurological function. So we scheduled him for uh, a surgical procedure, uh, surgical decompression the following day and we were able to work with the uh, equipment and with the materials that we had there. Sutures. Uh, 
with the complexity of the situation in the Congo, with there not being um, a reliable source of power, a reliable supply of water, the power went down halfway during the case and we had to, or uh, well, the anesthesiologist had to manually uh, ventilate the boy. Uh, the power came back on after about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and we were able to finish the case uh, and uh, take him into the uh, recovery room. Really inspiring for us uh, when we went to see him the next day that he had uh, regained full sensation in both his legs and that he was beginning to move his feet. And okay, so, so here we are um, with the young gentleman yesterday. Post operatively, we're beginning to see some movement in his feet and some return of sensation, which is bringing a smile to his face. <laughs> uh, um, Check out your dog, <laughs> he's, feeling, he's feeling better now. Uh, the outcome thus far is promising. Changing the dressing first day post operatively. We're all very excited for him. Seems to be making progress in the right direction here. So the wound is uh, looking good, first day post-operatively, taking off the dressing. We've got a small drip. Uh, for me and for us, this was one of the most compelling experiences of the trip and one of the reasons why uh, we're so motivated to develop the Spine Africa project to make sure that cases like this uh, which if treated properly if diagnosed early on are avoidable. <laughs>